Hello, my name is Rachel. I work as an education officer for the Marine Conservation Society. So today we're going to have a look at careers in marine conservation. So first of all, we're going to have a look at who the Marine Conservation Society are. Then we're going to have a look at my career path and how I've got to my job uh, for the society. And we're going to hear from some of my colleagues as well, who work in various different roles, including science, conservation and design, fundraising and education. And we'll finish up by all sharing our one piece of advice with you. So let's begin by looking at who the Marine Conservation Society are. My name's Rachel and I work as an education officer for the Marine Conservation Society. We are a UK based charity fighting for the future of our oceans. We want to see the seas full of life and nature thriving and we believe that we can achieve this together with people powered action. We work with a team of scientists to monitor the health of our oceans and we use this data speaking to school groups, to the public, to businesses and the government so that together we can make positive changes in our lives and informed choices to help protect the future of our oceans. We fight for marine protected areas to help preserve and recover seascapes, habitats and species. We have been a leader in helping reduce marine pollution over the last decade. We have brought about changes such as the charge of single-use plastic bags, the removal of plastics from face washes and shower gels. We've helped design a deposit return scheme in Scotland and we've helped change labelling on commonly misflushed items like wet wipes. And all of these things together are helping reduce the pollution on our beaches and in our seas. We campaign for sustainable fisheries and we help people make more environmentally responsible choices when choosing seafood using our Good Fish Guide. There's lots of volunteering opportunities that you can get involved in, whether it's cleaning up our beaches on our Beach Clean programme, helping with our education programme, or surveying the coast, looking at the health of our seas. Download our Good Fish Guide app. Take our plastic challenge. Help reduce microfibers by avoiding fast fashion. You can make a positive difference for our ocean. Get involved in one of our campaigns. Sign our petition, share your voice on social media, write to a local MP. Take a look at our website and follow us on social media for our current campaigns. Good luck on your ocean journey. So how did I get into the position that I'm in today? So at school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do career-wise. Um, I didn't love nature like I do today. I did very broad subjects for my A-levels. So I did geography, which is very broad, and uh, I did general studies, which is very broad, and I did English. And the only vague idea I had was to be a, a geography teacher. Uh, I knew that I wanted to leave my home in the Midlands and go and live by the sea. So I ended up doing a degree in geography and ocean science at Plymouth University. In my first year, I did a module in marine biology. And this is the thing out of everything that really sparked my interest. But there was no plans here in my degree course to do any more marine biology. The rest was focusing more on chemistry and physics. Um, so I knew I had to seek out experiences elsewhere. So throughout uni, I volunteered for the Marine Biological Association uh, in Plymouth, and this really cemented the idea that this is something I wanted to do, but it also reinforced the idea that I literally knew nothing about it. Um, so I needed to carry on seeking opportunities. So when it came to writing my dissertation, I'd heard of a volunteer body called Operation Volunteer, who um, deliver volunteer projects, uh, science-led projects across the globe. 
and I spoke to them about the opportunity of doing a science and marine biology dissertation. So I was lucky enough to go to Honduras um, in the summer of my second year of university and do my dissertation looking at zooplankton in deforested mangroves compared to afforested mangroves. And this is easily one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, I got heaps of experience and I realised, yeah, this is, this is definitely what I want to do. In uh, the summer after uh, graduating from university, another volunteer opportunity came up to work with one of my lecturers, but in a very different uh, area. So this was going to be working um, in a school in Nicaragua in Central America. I was going to have to learn Spanish to be able to teach in Spanish, and I was going to be teaching computer science, which is a completely new subject area to me. So I proved to myself that I could do new skills um, if I set my mind um, to it. Um, and I got experience in teaching. And I also got some tenuous environmental experience as well, as I spent a few weeks traveling around with my lecturer, who was collecting research and conducting interviews as part of his book, looking at environmental politics of Central America. So I then went on and did my master's in marine ecology and environmental management. Now, when I was at uh, school, I did a biology uh, A-level and I managed to fail it not only once, but twice. Um, so I never would have been able to go on and done biology at university. But by doing a degree in something different and by um, having lots of volunteer opportunities and experiences, I then was able to go and get a Master's of Science in Marine Ecology, which included biology as well. Um, and again, it proved to me that you can get to where you want to be. Maybe you just have to cheat the system slightly uh, and have a bit more patience as well. So my master's degree was pretty intense. It was a solid year of working with no holidays at all. And at the end of it, I kind of wanted to give my brain a bit of a break from academia. So I went and did a, a ski season. And you might be thinking, why are you talking about a ski season in a marine conservation talk? Well, I gained a lot of skills from here. It was a really intense place to work. Um, you're living and working and socializing with the same people and you're living in your place of work. Uh, they're very long hours as well. And I learned a huge amount about my social skills, about myself, about my uh, stress levels. Uh, and all of these have been really important skills, which I've then been able to transfer into different uh, career choices as well. So I think it's really important, even if you're doing a job that you think, oh, this isn't anything to do with where I want to be, just gain experience from it because every job can give you invaluable experience. So after this, um, I then managed to get a, an internship in the Caribbean working at a research station. Um, predominantly, I went out diving and snorkeling and I collected data in the field and I also brought samples back to analyze in the lab. Um, and also I worked with American study abroad students who were coming to the research station to do projects. From this, I learned that although I enjoyed it, I was pretty pants at science. My work mind just isn't very scientific. Uh, I'm not very good at maths and biology. Um, but what I did enjoy was communicating to others on a subject that I knew uh, and had a basis of knowledge on. So this kind of um, taught me that actually maybe I should be developing my engagement skills uh, more. When this internship finished, um, I then was on the job hunt and while I was at home with my parents and be jobless while job hunting, I decided to do another ski season um, and job hunt while also being able to do some snowboarding. Um, at the end of this, I then managed to get a job with Cumbria Wildlife Trust as a coastal conservation engagement officer. Now, this was a graduate program, um, and basically that meant that I could kind of develop the role however I wanted. So I took any opportunity uh, I could, and I also sought after loads of different opportunities, and I jam-packed uh, my week full of lots of different experience. And a lot of that experience was in engagement uh, and community work. 
And this uh, really opened up my mind to the fact that I didn't need to be um, a geography teacher if I didn't want to be. Actually, I could do environmental education in the field and spend way much more time outside communicating with a range of different ages. At the end of this graduate program, um, I then managed to get a job with Norfolk Wildlife Trust. Now, this was um, a seasonal position and it was going to be a lot more terrestrial focused than marine ecology. But from job hunting, I'd realised how few jobs there are in marine education um, and that it's a really competitive market as well. So I knew that I needed to increase my uh, education experience in general. So this job, um, I travelled across Norfolk and I gained loads of experience um, in bird ID and bird ecology, looking at uh, insects and plants ID as well. And I taught primary and secondary schools. And I knew that at the end of this seasonal position, there was a job coming up um, also with Norfolk Wildlife Trust at a coastal nature reserve. So I thought, oh, coastal, that's a connection to marine ecology. So I did everything that I could to gain extra experience so that maybe I had a chance of securing this job. And lucky enough, I managed to get the job. This was an incredible job because it was opening up a brand new education centre. So I got to develop stuff from the start. So I completely developed brand new education sessions that were delivered to primary schools, secondary schools, universities and adult learning workshops as well. And then I also designed, delivered and organised events in health and well-being and how art connects to nature. And we did workshops and exhibitions and we had music and nature events as well. So really diverse range of things. And I managed a team of volunteers. And one of the highlights of that job was um, when we launched the Education Centre, I got the privilege of meeting Sir David Attenborough and um, introducing him to the Education Centre. Now, um, I then spent five years um, away from my partner. So we both did our masters together and we both were very career focused. Uh, and if you just stay in one location, it means that you can't really get that extra work experience. So we'd both traveled across the UK, but I'd got to a point now where I thought I'd gained quite enough of experience. Um, and so I went and moved to Devon to be with my partner and I got a job with the Field Studies Council. This was a much more teaching focused job. Um, I spent more time in the classroom, still going outside uh, every day, but I never kind of taught in a formal classroom setting before. So it was a really good experience with that. And also it was a really good experience to learn the national curriculum more. And I predominantly worked with A-level students. My partner had just finished his PhD though, um, uh, after a year that I'd worked in the Field Studies Council, and um, we decided to have a break um, and be able to actually spend some time together. So in 2019, we spent the year traveling around Europe in our camper van named Scooby, um, and uh, we also did our third and final uh, ski season in Bulgaria. Unfortunately, we came back to the UK um, when the pandemic started and obviously it's been a bit of a strange year for all of us and an odd year to job hunt as well. Um, so I wanted um, to, to do something. Um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, but I also wanted to do something to help the community. And I got a job for the, most of the year um, working in a care home for adults with complex needs, autism and severe learning difficulties. Completely new area of work for me, um, but I could actually, a lot of the skills from engagement and education, I could transfer to here and I learned loads of new skills, listening and patience and um, new areas of work, working with those with learning difficulties that I can take forth uh, into my teaching experience as well. But ultimately, my passion still lies in marine ecology. And in August, I finally secured a job in marine education. So this is nine years since um, I did my uh, master's degree um, and nine years and I finally got my first full time marine focused education job. So yes, it's taken a while to get here, but along the way, I've got loads of different uh, experience and I'm so happy to be working back in the field of solely marine. Uh, every day I get to say the word sea and ocean and marine, which is just great. Um, and I'm learning new things again and I'm relearning things I've not thought about 
for a while. So what am I doing? So predominantly, I will be reviewing our education resources. Um, but since August, I've gained lots of new experiences as well. And I've already um, done some work around one of our largest annual events, the Great British Beach Clean. So I've helped design teachers packs. I've delivered webinars on this. Um, and then I've gained new skills in directing, editing and recording videos. And I've developed a brand new series of climate change talks, which I will be delivering throughout the week. So now we're going to hear from some of my colleagues in the Marine Conservation Society who've worked here for a lot longer than I have. And they're going to talk you through their career paths and what they love about their jobs. Hey, guys, hope you're having a good youth climate week so far. So my name's Amdeep Sangera and I work for the Marine Conservation Society and I have the very privileged position of working on turtle conservation and general marine conservation in the Caribbean. And, you know, being born in Birmingham and growing up in a city to then living out in the Caribbean for five years, working with MCS was obviously a massive change, but it's possible. You know, and I'm going to talk a bit about how I got into this position. So I actually started off doing a mathematics degree and that wasn't really because I was um, necessarily interested in mathematics. I just didn't know what else to do. Um, and then I took uh, an, an accountancy job after I finished my degree and I quickly realised this is not the path for me. So I did a bit of traveling to try and understand, you know, which direction I wanted to go into. And during that trip, I used a lot of my mathematics on environmental projects. And from there, I, I realized, yeah, this is the direction I wanted to go into working in the environment. So basically, I, I did a, a research master's at um, a university, a University of Lancaster that involved not only um, working on environmental issues, but also understanding the role that people have to play in environmental problems. So it was like a social science based masters. And, and since then, um, I, I worked in Kenya for a year, uh, working on um, turtle conservation. And then I was lucky enough to get my first role at Marine Conservation Society working in the Turks and Caicos Islands. And um, my role now, um, it really involves supporting a lot of marine managers across the Caribbean. So for that, uh, you really need to be able to listen respectfully to people, try and gather people together and, and, and make conservation plans for the species or the, the waters you're protecting. So, you know, you need to have you know, communication skills is quite useful and really important for this for this role. But I also think having a, a, a healthy respect for uh, the cultures um, where I've done my field work in. I think that's also been uh, really important and, and that really helps you get ingratiated with the people and will you know give you success, hopefully in the long term. And I think the best thing about about my job, what I really like is you know, visiting these islands and, you know, working directly with fishermen, directly with the conservation officers and seeing how marine conservation is playing out in, in these other parts. Yeah, I really love that because you, you really get to see the issues directly at hand, get to meet the people that are involved and you, you really understand how you can best support the situation. Hi there, my name's Catherine and I'm the Scotland Conservation Officer for the Marine Conservation Society. So I'm originally from Murray, up on the northeast coast of Scotland. We've got our own residential population of bottlenose dolphins. So from a very early age, I fell in love with the sea and all the incredible creatures, including our sharks, that call it home. But at school, I wasn't very good at science. I didn't even study biology. So I didn't think I was going to be able to work in marine conservation because I wasn't going to be able to be a marine biologist. But what I did instead was outside of school, look for different volunteering opportunities. So I ended up using my Saturdays to volunteer at the Scottish Dolphin Centre where I learned more about the ocean, but also how to communicate what's actually out there to all the members of the public they're coming to visit. 
I was lucky enough then to find a degree that didn't need biology but could then connect me to the sea at Aberdeen University called Marine and Coastal Resource Management, which I really enjoyed learning more about what we are doing to protect the ocean. However, it was actually part-time working at the Disney store that led me onto my current career path. I absolutely loved engaging both young and older big Disney fans on what their favourite characters were and really enjoying that engagement side. So I tried to think, how can I combine the ocean with engagement? And I then started on a career path of environmental education. So I ended up moving down to Dorset to work for an outdoor company. And I was taking young ones out rock pooling for the first time, maybe taking some older students to do coastal management studies or river studies. And I loved that education element. But Scotland then called me home. So I went back to Scotland and started working at an aquarium where again I could start engaging people on how amazing our ocean is and what they can do to help protect it. I also wanted to get back into volunteering so I became a sea champion for the Marine Conservation Society and started to go out doing beach cleans and taking part in citizen and community science, going into schools, helping out at events in my spare time. So when the role of Scotland Conservation Officer came up, it was my volunteer manager who encouraged me to go for it. Maybe you can turn your volunteering into your full-time job. And here I am five years later, still working for MCS and absolutely loving it. Still getting to do those beach cleans and to do all of that education. But now I couple that with having meetings with politicians or with business and trying to get laws changed to protect our ocean all about reducing the amount of litter that's ending up on our beaches and impacting our wildlife. I'm still a sea champion though, and I still volunteer whenever I can. So I absolutely love working for MCS and the volunteering journey that I've been on has really helped me get the career in marine conservation that I thought maybe when I was younger, I wasn't going to be able to have. So no matter what your skills are, no matter what your passions are, you will be able to help and make a difference by working in ocean conservation. Hello, my name is Sanjay Mitra and I work for the Marine Conservation Society as a Corporate Partnerships Manager, so I sit in the fundraising team. And my role is to bring in funds and support for the charity from the commercial sector, companies and businesses. What I really love about this role is that it's a really dynamic area of fundraising. Um, that's to say there's a wide variety of many different ways you can work with companies, so uh, project sponsorships, um, developing product associations, uh, encouraging um, staff fundraising um, and we have a brilliant employee uh, engagement program at MCS especially through our um, beach watch uh, beach cleaning program. So some of the uh, skills that are required in corporate fundraising are things like um, communication skills so being able to um, communicate your charity's work in a clear and compelling way to, um, to motivate and, and encourage uh, potential supporters to choose you as a charity. Um, you also need to develop um, good interpersonal skills. Um, <clears throat> much of the time you're dealing with one person at a company, so it's really important to um, develop a, a rapport with them. Um, you need good research skills as well. Um, due diligence is really important at charities. Um, there are so many amazing companies doing great things out there that we really want to work with. Um, but at the same time, we need to make sure that any companies we might be working with um, aren't doing bad things, especially um, for the marine environment. Um, and other useful um, skills are things like negotiation skills. Um, corporate partnerships is, is, is about getting to a win-win scenario where both, where both organizations um, get something out of it. And so, yeah, negotiation sometimes is quite an important part um, of relationship building. And lastly, a few attributes which are really important too, uh, things like patience, um, determination, um, tenacity and uh, resilience. I've been working at MCS for around seven years now, but I haven't always worked at uh, an environmental organisation. Um, in fact, if you told me 10 to 15 years ago uh, that I'd be working for MCS now, um, I really would have wondered what that route would have been. Um, a couple of sectors I used to work in beforehand were uh, in hospitality um, and in the music industry. I um, spent a few years as a tour manager. But there came a point where uh, I really wanted to work in the charity sector and I spotted a six month placement at an East London theatre to learn about fundraising and marketing and um, I saw I applied and was successful and after that six months I spotted an opportunity to, um, to work at MCS. And those skills I'd learnt 
at, a, um, at the theatre meant that I was able to apply for this role. And so luckily I got that role at MCS and um, yeah, a couple of years after that I applied for the role I'm in now. And uh, I think the important takeaway from this is that I think in the early part of your career, um, whatever you do, there are always going to be um, transferable skills. So, you know, you never know what your route to working for an environmental organisation organization will be. So good luck. Hi everyone, my name is Clara Johnston and I'm a fisheries policy advocate here with the Marine Conservation Society. So growing up, I was always fascinated with everything to do with the ocean. I lived quite close to the sea when I was younger and also did my first uh, paddy diving course when I was about 15. So always have and still now really enjoy being in and around the sea. At school, my favourite subject was also biology, so I decided to do that as my undergraduate degree. Um, obviously, biology is quite a large subject, um, and within that, I found that I was most interested in anything relating to marine conservation and fisheries management in particular. So I decided to specialise a little bit further and went on to do a master's in marine environmental management at the University of York. Before starting with the Marine Conservation Society, most of my uh, professional experiences have actually been abroad. I think that's a great benefit of the sector in general. It gives you the opportunity to work in some pretty exciting places. So before here, I was working in um, as a resort marine biologist in the Maldives. That gave me a lot of experience with public speaking and marine education. And I have also worked in Madagascar as a field scientist on a, a community-based fisheries management project with a company called Blue Ventures, which again was another absolutely incredible experience to have had. Working in fisheries policy, particularly in the UK, is, is very exciting at the moment. Um, one thing that I've been doing a lot recently is work on the new fisheries bill, which will determine how the UK will manage their fisheries going forward um, following the end of the transition period now that we have left the EU. So those will come into play in 2021. I also work on a lot of um, fisheries management consultations, and these can um, focus on either a specific stock or species, for example, like North Sea cod, or can be a little bit more wide ranging and focus on you know, deep sea fisheries in general. I think to work in policy, you do have to have quite good attention to detail and also like and be quite good um, at researching. Um, it's really important that any advice that we give is well evidenced and, um, and accurate. But I think it's an incredibly exciting uh, sector to get into and uh, working in environmental policy does give you a lot of scope to influence things that could really benefit um, the environment in general. So if anybody is interested in getting into the environmental policy sector, I would highly recommend it. Hi guys, I'm Josh. I work as a graphic designer here at the Marine Conservation Society. I've been here for about two years um, and it's such a wide, varied role that I do here. There's um, a lot of stuff that I do on campaigns, appeals, fundraisers, and uh, just the general marketing projects. A lot of what I do is looking at the brand as a whole, how we communicate ourselves, and just looking at the outputs that people produce, and kind of making sure everything looks good and proper when it goes out. So um, a main part of what I do here is actually social media, infographics, video editing and things like that and then we also do printed stuff so things at events like leaflets and magazines there's quite a lot going on um, so I've been working as a graphic designer for about eight years I graduated with my degree and then moved to London uh, where I started this whole career path uh, I've worked in a lot of different places some of them have been good some of them have not been very good but I guess that's just kind of part of the experience really because you learn what you like and what your interests are and what skills you can carry on learning and what you can kind of take ownership of along the way so I think it's a yeah it's a rewarding career path to go down um, I've done quite a few different things video editing illustration branding printing uh, I've even made a few fonts you know it's it, it's all been it's been quite eclectic um, yeah, and then bringing all those skills back into the Marine Conservation Society is it helps me because I learn more experience there, and it helps the guys at MCS because I'm bringing in lots of experience to them as well. Um, and working at, working for a charity, particular 
particularly this one, it is it is really nice because I do have an interest in marine conservation myself, and it gives you an added purpose to what you're doing really. So I already I already love doing design, and now I can do design for a good cause. And seeing your sort of artwork being used in a positive way and shared in in positive in positive messages is 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 really rewarding actually. So yeah, it's it's great working here, and I'd recommend it to anyone. Hi guys, I'm Jenny, Education Manager for the Marine Conservation Society. My job involves leading our education team who develop and deliver education resources for schools and young people all around the UK. We run workshops, projects, and we've got loads of online resources to help educate young people of all ages about the ocean and marine conservation. As well as teaching, my role involves project management, promotion, marketing, and science communication. And I also get to get involved in the actual science because we do citizen science projects and lead sessions out on the beach as well. It's a really varied role. I've been working for MCS now for about seven years, and before that I was a teacher. I did my first degree in primary school teaching a long time ago now, and I worked as a classroom teacher in the UK and Australia. My interests have always been about teaching young people the important things to be engaged active citizens, to have a voice and to speak out about issues that they believe in. After being a senior manager in schools for several years, I realised it just wasn't what I wanted. I wasn't spending enough time with young people and I wasn't teaching them really important stuff in life. So I took some time out. I did my master's um, and then in, back in 2013, I started at MCS as an education officer. Leaving teaching and working for an environmental charity seemed like a really logical step to combine the passions that I have for real life learning and encouraging people to be good citizens and care for their world. It's been such a long time now since I heard anyone say, Miss, why is it that we're learning this? Everything that we teach at MCS is so important and there's a real value in what we do. And that's what makes me buzz. It's that moment when you realise that the young people you're working with, they're not going to forget what you've said. They're not going to forget what they've learned. And they will go on to make changes and the changes that we need. Maybe they'll become a marine biologist or maybe they'll be the next MP that's able to make changes in the way that we do things and the laws that affect our ocean and our environment in general. It's that that I find so amazing, knowing that we're making a real difference. And I genuinely, I really do love what I do. My career advice is to say yes to every opportunity. And whatever that opportunity is, really throw yourself into it. Soak up Ill all the skills and knowledge that you can. In many conservation sectors, volunteering experience is required. So do what you can to get those volunteer opportunities. Volunteer while you study, work while you study and save up the pennies to volunteer in between. And once you are volunteering, do everything you can to gain skills from your work and from those that you're working with as well. One piece of career advice from me is that whatever you do, whatever roles you um, work in, um, in the early part of your career, and actually all through your career, um, the skills that you use and skills that you apply, always um, keep a record of them and write down examples of how you've used these skills. They are so important to remember when it comes to um, interviews. So if I had one piece of advice to give, um, I'd probably just say the marine conservation sector is massive and there are so many different ways that you can get involved to benefit both uh, ocean and coastal communities. Um, so don't be scared to explore that a little bit and take as many opportunities as you can to work in different sectors of marine conservation as that can give you a one a quite rounded and um, complete view of the sector and also just help you decide which element of marine conservation it is that really really interests you. So in in terms of advice if there's one thing that I could say is that I think what really helped me um, getting into this position at MCS was you know instead of focusing on a, a purely environmental uh, degree or master's uh, it was what's called uh, interdisciplinary. So it also focused on sociology and social sciences. And, and that's really helped me because essentially people are involved in pretty much every single environmental problem that we see. And they're a critical element of these issues. So there's a real need to, to understand people 
uh, to be able to work with them, work with them, and then have them uh, as part of developing the solution. So I think that would be one one um, advice is that you know when you when you're thinking about getting involved in marine conservation, there are people involved, so doing something interdisciplinary. And I'm going to be cheeky and just say one more other thing, and and I would say just you know don't give up. Uh, you, you know, if if you're passionate about this, then then go all the way, um, because you know we need people like yourselves to 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 bring new ideas, new energy into this movement, um, and it is it's competitive, yes, but that doesn't stop people getting in. So I would also say, yeah, you know, be resilient, um, keep going and hopefully you'll, you'll realise uh, your goals. Thank you. If I was to give one piece of career advice, it would be follow your passion. So whether that's volunteering outside of work or outside of school or learning more in your free time, because it was that passion, that volunteering that led me to my current job. So the power of volunteering and doing things in your spare time cannot be underestimated. The best piece of career advice I could give is to keep on top of your portfolio. I think it's really important that, especially as a designer, you sort of give yourself moments to assess where you're at and the work that you've been doing over the years, or even the work that you've been doing at, at university. It's important to just make sure you you kind of keep keep on filtering that and taking out the bad stuff and keeping the good stuff and what works well and what you can see you can improve on and, and then making sure that the places that you work you get all the experience and projects you can from there and and just sort of keep developing it and yeah it, it, it's worthwhile because when you get to the position where you might be applying for jobs or you hear about a job suddenly and you, you kind of need your portfolio up to date and ready to go because that way you'll you'll gain a clear advantage over other people because you you've already got everything there ready to go and ready to pass along and yeah along with your cv i think they're the they're the most important things to keep up to date if i had to give one piece of advice for anyone choosing their future career i would say choose to do something that you love if you love something you will be passionate and if you're passionate about something then that means that you will be successful in whatever it is that you choose follow your dreams and work hard and you'll always be a success so hopefully you found uh, all of that really useful um, and I want to finish by making some commitments. So at the Marine Conservation Society, our vision is to see the seas full of life. We want to see nature flourishing and we want to see people thriving. So our call to leaders is to increase the amount of jobs and career opportunities in the sustainability and conservation sectors. And we want you guys to stay positive and to follow your passion. In my case, it's taken me nine years to get to the point of getting my first marine education job. But along the way, I have learned lo lots. And by following my passion, I'm finally in this job, which is fantastic. So thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear um, more um, about uh, the Marine Conservation Society and what we do, I'll be delivering talks throughout the week, uh, Climate, the Sea and Me. Uh, and you can have a look at our website and follow us on social media. Thanks. <laughs>